Good morning everyone. The purpose of our live streaming this morning is to provide further information on about the implement, system implementation of our reading comprehension tool, PAT-R. The data will allow us an opportunity to ask questions, patterns, trends about student growth. All students from Year 1 to Year 10 will participate in the assessment. The whole of cohort assessment will be assessed and evaluated in two years' time to see the benefits and to determine if we need to continue the whole of cohort assessment. The system requirement is that the assessment take place in September, October each year as that's when PATR has been normed. This year the system is paying for the licence that schools require to administer PATR However, from next year, schools will have to budget for that. If your school already has negotiated an, a licence to administer PATAR, schools this year will be reimbursed. I'm going to hand over to Terry Cornish from ACER in a few moments, and she will take you through the processes and the procedures, and outline the, what uh, PATAR can provide for us the purpose of using PATAR. I'd just like to also flag with you that on the 7th of November and the 31st of October we will provide an afternoon session where Terry will come back to the diocese and work with you on an analysis of the data. So without further ado, I'd like to hand now to Terry Cornish who will take us through what PATAR is about. Thanks Trudy and thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to your schools. Uh, we're going to run through PAT reading online today, uh, essentially the purpose of it and what you can do with the data. So PAT reading is used for a number of different reasons, uh, to benchmark data, to uh, monitor your improvements in terms of literacy skills for each of your students, to inform uh, your own teaching program and identify areas that students may need to develop. Uh, or their actual strengths and weaknesses, to provide objective information to com uh, complement uh, other assessments including your own class activities, uh, teacher judgments, NAPLAN data uh, and other tests that you might do within your um, classrooms. PAT Reading Online um, allows progress in reading to be monitored as Trudy said from year 1 to year 10 and we have a common scaled score that uh, PAT Reading is based on. In terms of the uh, classification of items, you can actually look at retrieving information, reflecting on formal content, interpreting explicit information and interpreting implied information. It will provide you normed information for um, PAT reading and it covers a range of text types which you'll see um, once your children actually start doing the test. In terms of the vocabulary test which is also available, um, we've extended some of the tests uh, to include Year 9, Year 10. In terms of when you test, um, you've already decided to test in September, which is the perfect time as PAT reading was actually normed in September. In terms of choosing the appropriate test, you have a range from kindergarten to year 10 in the written exam, but in the online you actually start in year 1, and that allows you to choose a test that's specific for each grade. So test 1 is actually for year 1, test 2 is for year 2, etc. PAT reading is a timed test, you have 40 minutes to do the test. Uh, it's administered online in either a group or an individual uh, situation. The students must have access to a computer and um, access to the internet and each student will be supplied with their own username and login. In terms of uh, the advantages of using online, it's very engaging for students to complete uh, their tests on a computer, a little bit better than um, a paper and pen situation. You actually will have instant reports and interest, interest, sorry, instant scoring um, and electronic reporting of re your results. They can be customised by tagging the children and that actually allows you to, to group your classes according to those tags. Your interactive reports will provide diagnostic information uh, and that will actually inform your teaching uh, on an item by item basis. It's very flexible, you can actually suit the, um, the testing to your needs. So 
if you need to do it by class or by group, you can do that. And progress can be monitored from year to year on both an individual and a group basis, which I'll, I'll show you further down the line. And regular updating of content and norms occurs. Uh, because it's an online system, you don't have to wait for our usual seven-year cycle to uh, update, say, um, written test. In terms of the platform, the OARS platform is the ACR assessment and reporting system. It started in February 2012, and this will allow you to um, manage your candidates, the reports, and the actual tests. It also gives you a reliable uh, test delivery interface and this will generate your interactive reports. Essentially you'll be given your own school name and that will be your, your OARS report. So uh, you'll have your landing page for, for OARS. In terms of the first screen that you'll see when you look at your, um, your OARS platform, your school will come up, the test that you've uh, so, sorry, the test that you've signed up for, which would be PAT reading, it will show you the number of candidates you have and um, the number of tests that have been actually uh, completed or, in, or are left to be completed. In terms of adding candidates, uh, your, your school's data has already been uploaded to the OARS platform uh, through Trudy and um, your Parramatta Diocese, but if you have any individual students who come in at a later date, um, you can always add them manually, um, which is a pretty straightforward process. In terms of tagging, tagging is the most crucial part of the OARS platform. What it allows you to do is actually tag a child according to their strengths and weaknesses. So you can tag them um, by perhaps accelerated or special needs or ESL. Um, it might, you want to tag it as um, a Catholic um, Parramatta Diocese, you can tag them any way you need to and this will allow you to go from your year level data down to your class level and then down to your individual groups. So tagging as I said is, is probably the most crucial part of the whole process and will actually give you the most meaningful data. In terms of choosing the test, um, as I said before, the test levels are the same as the grade levels, so test one is for year one, test two is for year two. You would actually choose PAT reading um, and then the individual tests, choose the children that would be doing the test and then um, that particular test would be allocated to those children. In terms of the login that the students um, use, it's actually the same login page that you have, so the OARS platform doesn't change. However, they'll actually be logging in with their own username and password, which will you'll be supplied. Um, the username can be their name and it can be hyphenated or it can be a student ID number. The password can be generic, so it could be your school name or something that's specific to your school, or you can have a computer generated password. It's totally up to you. If you can see your PowerPoint, this is actually the, the screen that the children will see. So they have um, their directions are actually outlined for them. They're told that they have 40 minutes. They're able to actually um, choose a response or an answer that they think is correct. But if they go along the test and then think, oh, I don't think that's correct. I want to go back and change it. They can easily do that. Um, you can check your answers at the, at the end of the test. Uh, hopefully they'll have time to actually go in and check all of their answers um, and it will actually suggest to them that they need to check their answers before they finish. The next screen actually shows an example of one of the test pages. This shows you the um, left hand side which is always stimulus material and the right hand side shows the questions that the children are choosing from. Um, and the progress bar at the top actually shows which questions they've completed. Now, usually that would obviously be um, shaded all the way through and then when they come to the end, they press end, the question will come up, you have missed um, two, four, seven or whichever questions they may have missed or it might not come up with any questions they've missed but it will say finish. Once they press finish again, the test is complete and they'll be logged out of the system and you'll get the report. Now in terms of what you can get from the report, the data will come through, um, as I said, instantly once the children have finished the test and it will come through in terms of our normal normed data. So you'll have your scaled score, um, your raw score, the uh, stainine, 
and the percentile. So you'll be able to access all of that data from your group report. If you want to go into an individual question, if you've shown, uh, if the results are showing that the, the children have got a particular um, problem with a particular question, you can actually go in by just clicking on the question and the um, question itself, the stimulus material and the choices that the children actually made when answering that particular question will come up. So that means you can actually see the percentages of um, within your class of who chose which question, um, or sorry, which who, who chose which answer, um, and that will allow you to see if there's any common um, anomalies or if there's a, a mistake or a, a strength that's coming through, you'll see that straight away. Also, you can see the level of difficulty of those individual questions and a classification and descriptor will come up as well. So each of our PAP reading questions has actually been um, analysed and then uh, classified into particular areas, which I mentioned um, earlier on. The next screen actually shows you how um, the data can be sorted. So you can sort by uh, gender, you can sort by scaled score, you can sort by raw score, percentile rank and day nine, which will allow you to give yourself a, a rank order report for your class. Um, you can also sort by item difficulty, item classification and item, uh, sorry, percentage correct. So if you sort by item classification, you can actually see where your strengths and weaknesses are across the class. Um, if you sorted by, say, in inferential questioning or inferential uh, sentences, they'll actually be able to show the children who are um, perhaps struggling in that area and you can concentrate more on that area um, in your classroom activities. In terms of our scaled scores, the scaled scores are probably the most important element of a standardised test and what it allows you to do is look at the results um, on tests of different levels of ability, sorry, levels of difficulty, and they can be compared. So scaled scores take into consideration both the level of difficulty of the test items and the level of ability of students and are used to measure progress. For example, a raw score of 14 on Pat Reading Test Booklet 4 is equal to a scaled score of 106.1, whereas the same raw score of 14 on Pat Reading Test Booklet 10 is equal to a scaled score of 137.2, which enables you to um, see the results of different test levels of ability and compare these. So even if a child got that same raw score from test four all the way up to test 10, their um, scaled score would actually go up because the test itself is getting harder. Uh, percentile rank is a simple means of indicating a rank order and will show you the position of the student's results in relation to um, the original reference sample or cohort. For example, a student with a percentile rank of 45 has a score that is equal to or higher than the score obtained by 45% uh, of the reference group or the cohort, um, whilst a student with a percentile rank of 96 has a score that is equal to or higher than the score obtained by 96% of the reference group or they're in the top 4% um, depending on how you want to look at it. If, um, if you were to look at the next screen, I'm showing you the individual report there for um, Pat Reading Comprehension Test 2. So you can see across the top of the um, table there's a red dotted line. That's actually their scaled score and the scaled score for Pat Reading is along the left hand side and then their questions um, and their answers are actually within all of those boxes and they're classified according to the uh, question type. So you've got your implied, inferential, um, your reflection, etc. Now, as you can see, those green dots or the, the green shaded questions are the ones that the child got correct and the red boxes are the ones they got correct. So you can actually go in to that incorrect question and have a look as to why they might have made that mistake and then work on, on um, their uh, weaknesses. This child actually did quite well, um, stay nine of eight and a central rank of 91 um, and she only got three questions incorrect. As you can see though, the, um, the spread across the uh, different levels of classification show you that um, she's actually got quite a good response in terms of her um, scattered categories. So the three she got incorrect were all reasonably high level. If you had a child who, were get, who was getting, um, sorry, correct answers above their scaled score but also 
uh, incorrect answers below the scaled score, that would indicate um, a slightly um, discrepancy in terms of your results because you would hope that if it was a scaled score um, of a certain number, that they would actually get all of the questions below that scaled score correct. So you can, you can see if there's an anomaly um, across that scaled score. But usually it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, in terms of stainines, stainines are derived from percentile ranks. Percentile ranks are actually divided into nine categories. Originally it was called standard nine and that was abbreviated to stainine and the digits one to nine are used. They are good for grouping students, um, however it is recommended that only two different, sorry, a difference of two or more stainines should be regarded as indicating a real difference in performance. And the important thing to note with stainines is that you must look at the scaled score range within that stainine because if you don't, you would assume that a child um, or all children in that particular stainine was actually working at the same level and that's not always the case, especially in the lower levels, so stainines 1, 2 and 3 um, and in the higher levels, you really need to look at that scaled score range as well. Now within the other elements of your ORS platform, you have um, the opportunity to filter uh, your reports. So if you think you want to have a look at um, a class compared to a different norming group, so if you were looking at test 4, 4, year 4, and you wanted to see how it would look if they were compared to year 3 norms, you can filter by um, just the press of a button. Uh, you can export any of your reports into Excel files and we actually enable you to export the individual reports into PDFs so you can print those off and have them in your um, portfolios or your uh, individual child's profiles. Uh, there are graphs available for all of the reports so you can have a graph of your um, question type, uh, question number or percentage correct. So the graphs are quite good to look at data clinically. You won't have any children's names um, in those graphs. Uh, the rest is pretty straightforward. Obviously tick means um, a correct answer. Uh, your PAT scaled score achievement is that red dotted line that I um, shown you, showed you in the individual report. Stay nines are straightforward and then a percentage uh, symbol actually indicates a percentile uh, rank. Now in terms of using the results, you have the, um, the option to identify the dimensions with which students have had difficulties. So of course you can see their strengths and weaknesses. You can use item information in the group report to help inform your own teaching, uh, develop individual learning plans from those results, set goals and plan customised teaching activities, identify the degree to which consolidation of skills has occurred and measure effect effectiveness of any intervention programs that you're running. You've already registered so we don't have to worry about that screen and the pricing is also available on your PowerPoint for um, further down the track. And if you need any further information, um, if there's any questions, if you send them through to Trudy and then Trudy can um, send them on to me uh, and when we meet in October, November I can um, help you through with any of those queries as well. And if you have any um, further information that you need to get from, from me, I'm more than available. Um, to take your calls. And that's pretty much the, uh, the PowerPoint. Thank you.